Welcome to a Parallel Project Training APM Project Management Qualification Podcast based on the APM Body of Knowledge 6th edition. You should be using this in conjunction with our e-learning, study guide and potentially a tutor-led course. For more information, please visit www.parallelprojecttraining.com. Hello, welcome to another Parallel Project Training Podcast. And this time we're looking at stakeholder management processes. And we're going to explain the importance of stakeholder management. John's still with me. Hello, John. Hello. So we're working our way through this quite um, a rate of knots. A rate of knots now. Mm. Trying to keep more quite short, to the sharp to the point. Yes, and we're getting better at it. We argue less. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> more boring now. Yeah, more boring. Everyone used to like the arguments in the old ones. They were just, they were just a go. Right. <clears throat> so I why like us? Why us? Oh, should we do describe stakeholder management process first, or should we do explain? Let's do explain the importance of stakeholder uh, management. Why do you have to worry about your stakeholders? Because if you don't, they'll get in the way and upset what you're doing. You won't understand what you're supposed to be doing. You won't know when you're finished. You won't know who's in charge. You get loads of people turning up at your desk saying, "You can't do that." You get loads of people digging under your fences and squatting on your land and that sort of thing. Yeah. Mm. So. I think it was all born out of that, really, wasn't it? A lot of it was, you know, the pressure group type thing and the big, big showpiece events like Manchester Runway, Second Airport, the Second Runway and, oh, yes. and Newbury Bypass yes, okay. and okay. Twyford Down. There's yes, you've a huge, and, and, and CND and that sort the, of thing, yeah. Came to the fore. So there was loads and loads. Of, I mean, Newbury's quite famous for it, really, because they, mm-hmm. they had um, mm-hmm. Newbury mm-hmm. Common and mm-hmm. Greenham Common, wasn't it? And Newbury Bypass. And it's like the hotbed of stakeholder dissent. <laughs> the whole Newbury. <laughs> You're seeing it now, though, with HS2. Aren't you? That's near Newbury. Actually, HS2, you know, stakeholders in that. Because there's loads and loads of people that think they're interested, that are yes. interested, that yes. maybe have got a view. And there's lots of people that are interested that haven't got a view. Yes. Completely don't matter, you know. Yes. People in sort of Northumberland. Don't really care. Are in, might be interested. Actually, they probably are, do care, because it's going to end go up there eventually. Is but, it? Um, you know that. People in the southwest don't really give a damn about HS2 because it's not coming anywhere near here. Well, they might do because the money that's spent on HS2 is not being spent, spent on, on improving the, the West Coast Main Line. Correct. Oh, sorry, the, the, the sort of, what do you call Great it? Great Western. Great Western, yeah. Mm, mm. So I think if you don't know who your stakeholders are, you don't understand what they want, there's less chance of being able to do what they want. You might not understand all the risks, all the benefits associated with what you're doing. You There might be significant pressure groups that just interfere and get in the way. Yes, there might be. Uh, and... You don't really understand the influence of the various people within the organisation, mm-hmm. like sponsors and mm-hmm. how the politics works. And mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so I think inter- internal stakeholders are as important as external stakeholders, really. Internal? Yes. Yeah. yes. So what's the difference? Internal stakeholders work for the organisation that's delivering the project. Is the project manager a stakeholder? Um, well, anyone of a vested interest in success or failure of the project. So Vested? Yes. Does Legitimate. Financial? No, legitimate. We had this debate last time. Invested. Well, vested means legitimate. Well, it's been monetary. Invested. Yes, it's not invested. It means vested. legitimate. Legitimate. So, uh, mm. so hopefully the project manager is a stakeholder. They'd have to be, wouldn't they? What about the suppliers? Definitely. Team? Yes. Sponsor? Yes. Users? Yes. Steering group? Definitely. Okay. But if you answer the question about project roles, you wouldn't include stakeholders? No. Because they haven't got a specific role because you don't know who they are, specifically. No. But you know those other roles are specific. Well, I couldn't write a role description for a stakeholder. Well, you could, but they probably won't follow it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you are not, you're not complying with your role description, therefore you are fired. <laughs> yes, my stakeholders do behave. So please, can you go away and comply with the stakeholder management procedure, please? So anyway, they are all, aren't they? Yes. Yes. Yeah, they yeah, also yeah, good. But there are loads of other people that, are stakeholders that aren't necessarily in that model. They're not the sponsor, not the users. There's loads of other people. Yes. And they're called stakeholders. Yes. And they're internal and external. Yes. And the external, give us an example of an external one then. Uh, well, it depends what your internal is, but yeah, well, that's uh, local kind of, authority. Yeah, so how would you, what's, the, what's the definition it, of an internal stakeholder? Someone who works for the organisation that you do. So the users might not work for your organisation. Correct. So they're external. They could be. Mm. Could be. I mean, you could define. I don't know. It's not a. It's not a clear cut line. This is it. And it's not required. internal and external. It's not really relevant. Well, they no. But the point is that they are. You need to be aware. There might be ones that you're not immediately familiar with. 
Yes, they so can be internal and external. They might be internal to your organisation. They might be internal to an adjacent organisation. They might be internal mm-hmm. to your suppliers. Mm-hmm. Whether you classify them as internal or external doesn't really matter, does it? No, no. No. Just be aware that they could come from anywhere, really. Correct. And that's the whole point of doing the identification process. Because mm-hmm. you identify them all. Yes. And you do that with org charts, websites, interviewing people. Hmm. Brainstorming sessions. My experience of, of like corporate account managers. Like you've got customers that you go and talk to. And I've yes. got customers I go and talk to. And I know who the main stakeholders are. Yes. And you know who the main stakeholders are in your... But I didn't do any of these. What? I didn't do any of these. No, no, but you just grow up knowing just them. Just find them. Yes. Yes. And you just come across them. That's right. But when, when we'd start a project on a customer site that we'd never been to before, we'd go and talk to the account managers and they'd draw you a stakeholder map, like yes. falling off a log. They'd go, yes. oh, this is this bloke here works for them and they works for uh-huh. them and uh-huh. they go on holiday together and all this, you know, so that you get a, a kind of an influence map, if you like, quite quickly. Mm. Mm. If you haven't got that, you have to do it some other way. Yes. Yes. There's there's other ways, but I don't know. Yeah, there's many ways of identifying stakeholders. And then there's a couple of models for how you can assess their importance, power mm-hmm. and interest or power and support. Or, is this the one in the new body of knowledge, power and interest? Yeah, I just... Is that what they stabilised on? No, the other one was too complicated. It was. So it I was. took it out. It was silly. Yes. So that's helping you to prioritise the stakeholders because some have more influence than others hmm. on the, your success or failure. So... I expect a high power stakeholder might be. Let's do a third runway at Heathrow. A high power stakeholder might be Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson, BA. Is he interested? Probably. Yeah, very Folks. interested. So he's got high power and high interest. Yes. So how might you relate to Boris? You go and talk to him in a very diplomatic way. Diplomatic through way. The appropriate channels. Yes. <laughs> By appointment. Yes. <laughs> through through his. So who's, structure. so who's at the other end of the scale? Who's got low power and is not interested in th- the Heathrow Third Runway? Me. Why? Because it's miles away from my house. Yeah, you're on the flight path, aren't you? No, miles away. Well, they're Ooh. about 20,000 feet. It's going to be a long here. runway. <laughs> about 20,000 feet. By the Paul lives in Gloucestershire. Yes. <laughs> so I'm so you're, not really that interested, so really. You're not interested? No, no not no, really. Not really. No. Only because of my profession. But have you got high power? No. No. You could choose to have high power. Mm, get, your, get yourself elected as local councillor or something. What, in Gloucestershire? Yeah, yeah. But you can still make a nuisance of yourself, can't you? Not to Heathrow. Yeah, you could. Not really. Yeah, you could. Not if old, I was local. You could develop a pressure group, Gloucestershire <laughs> against, <laughs> Gloucestershire he- against Heathrow. Heathrow Third Runway. Yeah, there'd be me and no one else. <laughs> I mean, there must be a lot of unburnt does. kerosene falling on Gloucestershire as they fly over the top. <laughs> Think what it's doing to your land. Yeah, I'm sure there are people who are interested. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If they wanted to be. Yeah. But you've got to understand, really, haven't you? What, what, what? How they? And did you? One thing that bugs me about this, and they were going to argue about this, I'm sure. But is do you do this at the beginning of the project? Yeah. Do you do it on the basis of where those stakeholders are now? Yes. Or where you want them to be? The only time I've ever actually done this, I made a list of stakeholders and then I went and interviewed them with an open mind. Okay. Because the danger of doing this before you've met them is you make all sorts of assumptions about what their attitude might be. Mm, You might not be able to meet them, though. You might not be able to meet them. But if... But you need to communicate with them somehow. Yeah, but it might be a group of people. It might be people you never met. A pressure group. Don't want to talk to you. Yes. So how then do you do that? Well, you usually employ someone to do that You've got to take advice, haven't you? You usually employ a PR agency to go and talk to them for you. Mm. I think it's a bit... Okay. It's so very, it's the, it's very the systematic, theory, the, isn't the, it? The theory is that you assess their power and interest, but actually, I think it can be dangerous to assume people are interested or not. I think it's dangerous to make any assumptions about people. Yes. That's, that's, I agree, totally agree with that. But my point is, you do this at the beginning, and where they currently are... Well, I don't think you know until you, talk to, until you interact with no, them. No, no, okay. So let's say we've talked to them. Yes. But now we know where they are. Yes. Then you can plan how you want to influence them. Because you want them to move on the grid. Um, you may or may, may want them to move. Or stay where they are. You might want to influence them to stay where they are. Yes. Or you might want to influence them to move up or down. Yes. But you can't make somebody less powerful, can you? You can. How? 
you can reduce their power by uh, anti PR. So how do you so by proving so their we're discrediting them. discrediting them exactly yes. so like an American politician <laughs> political campaign exactly. yes don't vote for this bloke he takes drugs yeah 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 so why did so the terminal for um, third runway so you might have to stop the third runway because of all the pollution when well, you commission a consultancy business yeah, to do yeah. a report that says actually it's going to be good for the environment mm, okay and, all right, and, all right. and, and so you, so you can reduce their power leverage that way can you reduce their interest and internal politics you can reduce their power by. No interest. By can you reduce their interest um, by boring them to death? <laughs> <laughs> keep inviting them to meetings. Yes, keep but he didn't come. <laughs> yes. um, I think interest probably no. That's less. That's more in their gift, isn't it? You can increase their interest. They choose to be interested or not. You yeah. can increase their interest, of course. Yeah. I think the point is that they, you can move them up and down, and on occasions, depends who they are. A lot of the time. Yes. Well, the the the. Talk we went to on HS2 is quite interesting because she was saying that some people are basically they're anti, so there's not even any point talking to them. No, no, because they're just so anti. You're never going to. It's like that bloke in Kelly's convince. Hero, isn't it? Don't give me those negative waves, man. <laughs> yeah. So you know. Now the point I'm trying to make, badly, is if if on that grid you decide where they are now, and you determine that they're not where they want them to be. Yes. You have to move them. Yes. Proactively. So you have to take steps to move them. Yes. Whether it be up or down or yes. left or right. Okay. Yeah? okay. And the delta, the movement, is what you write in your communication plan. Uh huh. And it's your communication plan that feeds directly off this. Because once you've decided you've got a bunch of people you need to communicate with, even if you want them to stay where they are, that's an entry in your communication uh-huh. plan. Uh-huh. And that's, to me, that's the, that's the test then. Because you could do this stakeholder analysis on a reasonably regular basis, and you'd work out whether your communication's working or not. Mm-hmm. It's starting to sound very systematic, and I don't suppose for a moment anyone ever does it like that, but that's the principle of what you're trying to achieve, isn't it? Yes, I've only ever met one person who actually did this in this way, Yeah, and that was the, some, the guy, the project manager for the O2. I've done it like this. Have you? The yeah, O2 yeah. Arena. We made the big mistake of leaving it on the whiteboard, though. Yes, that's a big mistake. Oh, on the flip chart, which was not a good idea. Because somebody comes yeah, on the yeah, yeah, I'll show you who's powerful, mate. You know. Yeah, I'm really interested. People don't like being put in boxes. Yes, it's like, yeah, that's right. So, that's right. So I think it's... It um, takes ages as well. And it's, it, people aren't robots, are they? You, no. You know, you can't, you can't measure someone on just on two axes. It just doesn't work like that. We have um, looked for better models, haven't we? There are beyond lots of the, others, aren't there? Beyond the scope of, of this, yeah, when we yeah. had that workshop on stakeholder management and stakeholder engagement. Um, but this is about yeah, the best yeah. we could find, because yeah, I think, actually, there could be a better, a more sophisticated approach to this. Well, they do stakeholder influence diagrams as well. That's the other one that you come across, isn't it? Yes. Where yes. this person influences that person. And yes, yes. But there's, there's also something about uh, some of the stakeholders have specific decision-taking responsibilities, and some people... Yeah, anyway, one day we'll develop this a little bit further, I think. But um, it's good enough for the exam, isn't it? Mm, mm, mm. Good. And then, so the plan how to communicate, you, you, you write your communication plan and um, action the plan, really. Yes. And if it's not working, do something differently. Mm-hmm. I think it probably works really well for users. If you're doing an IT rollout with users and, yeah. and communicating with users, yeah. and, and, and it's probably a real good model. When you've got these big projects with, with lots of external people, you're probably better off going to a PR agency than people who do this. I think the term stakeholder gets gets confused as well because especially in central government, you hear about people talking about stakeholders as being the, the kind of sponsor. Oh, do you? Yeah, yeah, they talk about our main stakeholder. Okay. And then the stakeholder sees themselves as, a, as the commissioning agent because that's who you're working for. That's the customer, if you like, client. Uh-huh. And then uh-huh. all the terms all get muddled up. Yes. Um, there's there's confusion a little bit sometimes, allegedly. But stakeholders are... And you hear people, other, not just government as well, one of our other customers who should remain nameless, they talk about stakeholders quite a lot, but they don't mean stakeholders, they mean users. Yes. Or they mean sponsor, or they mean... Well, they might mean stakeholders to mean customers. Hmm. They're generally the, the project managers level and above. They refer to as stakeholders. Okay. They never refer to the team as being stakeholders. 
No. Or suppliers as being no. stakeholders. But no. The stakeholders, the super super group is anybody, pretty much. Anybody in the whole world. Who needs, who has a say. Yeah, and then the tricky bit is to work out who's really important. Yes. So the question's going to be, describe a stakeholder management process. Um, and describe we the mention, importance of stakeholder management. Yes. And in the last couple of minutes, we should mention IAPM. IAPM. So there's a little model that, that a lot of these processes follow, which is identify something. So it's a sort of underpinning model of, of the APM is that you identify something. The next step is having identified that you then assess its relevance to the project. You then come up with a plan to um, influence it, and then you come up with a, a management structure to um, and you manage the monitor. Plan. You manage the manage plan. and monitor the plan. Yeah. Manage and monitor the plan to That's make right. sure that. It, what you expected has happened or if something else has happened you mm. you know why and that's and IAPM IAPM so I will be an APM it should be I and will be an MAPM it should be <laughs> but that won't work no. <laughs> and you won't be anyway because you don't get membership because you got APMP <laughs> yes, that's right <laughs> so no you can have membership with APMP but you don't automatically get it folks you need to do PQ from a training provider near you we hope you enjoyed this podcast and found it informative to order a study guide, e-learning, or a tutor-led course to go with this podcast, please visit www.parallelprojecttraining.com.